Welcome class of HC. Like this video on your way in and comment present in the comment section below if you are here to become the best version of you. Here are the four steps on how to change your mind, with the last step being very important, so please pay attention until the end. Step 1. Pay attention. Analyze your thoughts. In this context, to pay attention is to be attentive to the depths and corners of your thoughts. This means to be conscious that you are the one that is having your thoughts, and to not get lost or controlled by the impositions of the thought without choosing to do so. In practice, this means to first identify the thought that you are having, and then to examine what that thought actually means to you. It is taking a second look at what you are thinking, why you are thinking, and even more attention to who is benefiting from you thinking the way that you do. For example, let's say you are compelled to believing that your little brother who lives with you stole your favorite shirt. Paying attention to your thought pattern would be to examine why was your brother stealing your shirt your first thought? Do you have something against your brother? Is this what your brother is likely to do? Then to examine what is compelling you to draw that conclusion in the first place. Has it been done before? And then to further examine what kind of actions or reactions that that thought process is leading you towards and why. By analyzing your thoughts in this way, you're putting them in evidence. This is similar to a scientist isolating a microbe on a microscope to inspect the microbe's behavior. Once you are aware of the thought and all of its complexities, you will be able to separate from it because now you understand it. To pay attention is an important factor to changing your mind because it is often the case that we think a certain way because we don't have a full understanding of the details of a peculiar matter. Once you understand what you are dealing with, you can take more appropriate actions towards taking care of or ridding yourself of the situation appropriately, which would entail changing your mind. Step 2. Detach emotionally. It is important to be mindful of the fact that when you are wholly convinced of a thought, you are likely to also be emotionally attached to the thought. To detach from emotion is to make the conscious effort to identify where your logical and pragmatic thought processes end and where your emotional attachment to a perspective begins and to then act accordingly. Emotional detachment is an essential element to changing your mind because Often the battle isn't really with making logical sense of things, rather the battle is happening in your heart with how you feel about the thought in the first place. For example, let's say you love chocolate milkshake and it has been your favorite drink for as long as you can remember. And then in your late 20s, after so many years of drinking as much chocolate milk as possible, you realize that it is affecting your gut health. However. Because you have been having it for so long, you mentally try to defend your habit of drinking chocolate milk by thinking things like, it can't be that bad, I've always had it, and I'm sure there are other things much worse than drinking loads of chocolate milk that is probably causing my health problems. However, in this scenario, no matter how you try to rationalize it, it does not change the fact that you should probably begin to be very careful about consuming too much chocolate milk, or you will suffer the consequences. Just like in this example, it is important to assess that you can choose to continue to ignore reality, but you won't always be able to ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. Detach from your emotions so that you can change your mind and make the best decisions on the journey of you becoming your best you. Step 3. Choose your environment. It is important to accept that your environment has a significant influence over how you think and what you think. Therefore, it is important to choose friends, activities, reading, work, and all that you allow into your life with great care. All of these will influence you in some way or fashion. In this context, to choose your environment means to consciously minimize influences that don't serve you and to be mindful in your decisions and 
actions when it comes to spending your time and your energy. This will be a major catalyst to helping you change your mind because oftentimes, although we are experiencing the results of having the thought, the thoughts are not even our own. This means the people that you are around could play an important role in what you believe and why you believe what you believe. And at the very least, it sympathizes you to certain perspectives that you may have otherwise abhorred. For example, let's say you are around a group of friends that all put ketchup on their ice cream. All of your life, most of the people around you chose to eat ice cream in this way. And even if you didn't necessarily enjoy it, you are privy to that way of eating ice cream and don't really mind it after all that time. Now, imagine going abroad in a different circle of people and suggesting ice cream with ketchup on it. While everyone would probably react with confusion and maybe even disgust, you would sympathize with eating ice cream in that way and probably defend its taste without necessarily realizing how out of the ordinary that is. And this is because your environment made it normal for you. This anecdotal example is simply to demonstrate that your environment can have an influence on the way that you think, even when you are not necessarily conscious of it. This is why choosing your environment is of such importance when you are trying to change your mind. Your environment can be limiting beliefs, relationships, experiences, and situations that would otherwise propel you to a higher level of being. Help change the way you think by choosing your environment. Finally, step four, introspect. Introspection is an important factor to changing your mind because when you can spend time with yourself and ask yourself real questions about your frame of thought, you make yourself available and able to challenge those thoughts in an uninterrupted manner. Always remember, just because you are passionate about something, it doesn't mean that you are right about it. To introspect is to take a moment where you are able to ask yourself questions such as, why do I think this way? When did I start thinking this way? With introspection, you are able to give yourself the room to understand and appreciate the reasoning behind your thoughts so that you are better able to challenge that reasoning with another mindset that may ring more true to you. Sometimes the truth is what tells itself without words. To change your mind, take a moment and look inside you. Thanks for your attendance today. Before you leave class, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you here next class on Howell Consultations, the how-to to being true to you.